What the fuck? Look at it. What the fuck? No! PSI's fucking cancelled. She fucking ate it. Welcome to the island of bug snakes. Do you think bug snakes? Yes, definitely. What the fuck? What? Listen up, you smelly little asses. It's me again, Jim Sterling, with a trailer reaction video. This time for pretty much everything that was at the PS5 reveal. Not everything. Everything I thought of and just gathered together. So for the next 45 minutes, you've got me talking freeform as we look at trailer after trailer after trailer in real time. And as you can see, we've kicked off with one of the most anticipated games of all time, Grand Theft Auto V, at last. Can't wait to see how Rockstar follows up on Nico Bellic's classic adventures. Yeah. So yeah, it's GTA 5. And that this is how this is how Sony started the PS5 reveal. Not that it was a dreadful reveal, but this was not the way to kick off a presentation. That Sony opened by chatting shit, giving it all that, about how the PS5 is like the biggest graphical leap of all time, like the biggest generational step forward we've ever seen. It's not though, is it? Kicking it off with Grand Theft Auto 5 don't help. This game's like a thousand years old. Came out on PS3, let alone PS5. And when the PS4 first came out, a redo of Grand Theft Auto 5 was one of the first things that come out for it. So we're just doing it again. It's not as bad as Skyrim. Oh, I've hit the microphone there, sorry. I'd, I'd edit that normally, but we're going full on. So even the shitty pop filter not working, we've got to deal with it. We've got to go 45 minutes, free form. Free form, 45 minutes, no stops, all improvisation. Free form, we're not even two minutes in, free form. So that's all good. So that's GTA 5, um, you know, not really impressive, is it? Uh, now this is a brand new game. Oh wait, no it's not, this is the Spider-Man one, innit? I got Spider-Man and GTA 5 out of the way first. We got Deathloop coming up in a second though. So that'll be something new and fresh to talk about. Um, it's not particularly graphically uh, advanced, is Deathloop, or most of the games Sony showed. So there you go. Not that Sony was wrong to show off a lot of interesting, smaller, uh, some indie games and stuff like that. That was actually really good of them. It's just Sony gave it all that, like I said, and uh, this showcase, in my opinion, did not show um, anything quite so impressive as Sony was promising. Okay, I'm not saying the PS5 games look rubbish, they don't. But Sony appears, from this presentation, to be severely overselling the PS5. This is Spider-Man Miles Morales, which, um, looking around this morning, uh, apparently this isn't like a brand new full-on game. The Miles Morales bit's just sort of added on. Which is still cool, I guess. You know, I'd like to see a full-on Miles Morales game, just a full-on new Spider-Man game. But I'll take this because Marvel Spider-Man, the Insomniac game, was uh, was really good, wasn't it? I really loved it. Um, the only thing that really held it back for being like true on Game of the Year material for me was a lack of Mysterio, uh, which is a criteria that you can officially judge games on. So shut your mouths. All right, time for some new content. Here we go. Uh, free form, 45 minutes. We are looking at what is this? Death Loop. So this is that Bethesda game that they showed off at E3 last year. Or the year before that even. It might have been the year before that. Might not have even been E3. It was at a show. I think E3. Uh, Bethesda's showcase, I believe. They showed off this sort of grindhouse y retro-y 70s sort of looking uh, shooter. They didn't really show off any gameplay or, or much of that. It was mostly just sort of giving you the general concept of what's going on, and even then it didn't explain it very much. So this is a shooter from Arcane. Um, when they first showed this trailer off at the showcase, you know, some people thought, oh, is this a new Dishonored? Uh, no, it's from the Dishonored people. It's clearly got a lot of, uh, uh, shares a lot of DNA with the Dishonored series, but this is a different game entirely about two assassins who are well, basically Groundhog Daying it. They're doing a Groundhog Day. Uh, that's the titular death loop. Look, you die, and then, look, you got to do it again, look. Huh? 
How exciting. What was that other game that Bethesda did that was um, similar in terms of that, uh, in, so in terms of visual, audiovisual presentation? It was that third person action game where you played that woman who, there was like bullet time. And it doesn't matter, it really doesn't matter. So this looks like it'll be a, a lot of fun to play. Again, like most of the things shown at this uh, showcase, it didn't really demonstrate the power of the PS5. By the way, I understand that um, this whole presentation showed games at like 1080p, 30 frames a second. So I realize they are not as um, amazing as they will um, potentially look on a PS5. But that can only get you, you know, so far across the excuse chasm. A lot of these games just aren't designed from the beginning to take advantage of cutting edge technology. This game clearly isn't, and that's fine. I don't give a shit. It's the games, not the graphics or the power of the console that appeal to me. The console with the best games is the best console, in my opinion. Um, the most cutting edge, uh, graphically advanced consoles have rarely been the most successful of their generation even. You know, people gravitate towards systems that are good because they've got good content. This looks like good content. So I'm not saying the PS5 won't have good content. I'm just saying they need to stop. The industry needs to stop selling everything on graphics because it's not working. You're not fooling me. I won't spend the entire, um, the entire run of trailers here just complaining about Sony's own presentation of the presentation. The presentation was fine. It's the presentation of the presentation that I have issues with. And I saw some op-ed this morning about how, oh, Sony killed it, they knocked it out of the park. They showed game after game after game. We've got to stop that, by the way. We've got to stop praising showcases for showing game after game after game. And I've done this myself. You know, I've, I've praised these uh, E3 press conferences and shows where I'm like, oh, they didn't just bore us to death or show non-gameplay gameplay trailers, um, which Sony and Microsoft have both done with presentations for the next gen before now. Um, and I, but, but it really should just be the standard that if you're showing us a system that plays games, you should predominantly show us the fucking games. That should be bare minimum, not something praiseworthy. What one is this one? This is, ooh, this is the one I care about. It's another old game, not a new one. But, by the way, if I'm pausing, I'm just having a little drink of my drink, um, because free form, 45 minutes. Um, this is Demon Souls. I mean, look, carrying a bit of a body. So, my God. I've been waiting for this one for years. I figured it was only a matter of time before we'd see Demon Souls again. Um, this is a, a redo of the original Demon Souls, um, which is a game you know, I absolutely adore. I, uh, I still remember getting it. I remember getting it because uh, I was at Destructoid at the time and the uh, he wasn't editor-in-chief yet, but future editor-in-chief Dale North um, had played this. And I, th I think he did the review, but he didn't give it a score because he didn't beat it and he said it was too hard. And the review was mostly about how hard it was. Um, not even having a go at the game, just like, this is really hard. I can't play enough of it to score it. Um, and it got my attention, uh, just because I had heard that it was this challenging, uh, but, but really bleak game. I, I really like sort of bleak visuals when they're done really well with, with adequate detail and, and they look like they show some history. It's not just gray slabs. And that's something I, I fell in love with with Demon's Souls and uh, obviously carried through on to Dark Souls. So I love that uh, Demon's Souls has its own very particular atmosphere and I'm really looking forward to seeing it again. This is Ghostwire, Ghostwire Tokyo. A game that uh, I believe has been in development for a long, long time, and as such, again, doesn't visually look all that impressive. However, again, that's me judging it from all of these games being used to convince us the PS5 is excellent. On its own merits, this trailer looks like it's going to be, well, it's going to represent quite a fun game. So this is Ghostwire Tokyo. We've heard about this before. This is uh, from Tango. And God, they're knocking the microphone again. I don't know if um, 
all of you are aware, but I'm in a temporary office at the moment because my what will be my office has Justin living in it until he's um, got himself a place. And so I'm in my bedroom, but there's nothing here to really help with echo or reverb. Plus, there's some background noise, so I've got a blanket all over me. And within the confines of this blanket is my monitor and my cup of morning coffee and a microphone. And it's very hot in here. Bringing hot drinks in didn't help. Also, I should be talking about this trailer. Um, I really like the visuals. You've got Slendermans with umbrellas. You've got Invisible Schoolgirls. You do Doctor Strange shit from the looks of it. That looks like it's just going to feel good to play. Just um, firing off commands uh, while the character does all these hand signals, all uh, strangey. Looks like that could be quite fun. And also that was cool on the mic, uh, on the bike. I tried to say microphone and motorbike at the same time, and I almost called, I almost called it a microphone, which, by the way, would be an excellent adventure. Not a Bill and Ted excellent adventure. <laughs> I don't know why I said it. I've never called anything an excellent adventure before. It must just because I saw that trailer for uh, Bill and Ted's three. Bill and Ted do it again. What is this? Godfall? All right. This is Godfall. This is that one that um, at the Game Awards, um, Gearbox tried to sell as a, what was it? A slasher, a looter slasher or a, a looter stabber. Basically, they tried to... They're trying to market a third-person action game as a looter shooter, but without shooting. I can't remember exactly what they fucking called it now, but I told them not to do it. Because they said, oh, we call it this. I said, you don't have to. Looks like it might be fun. This looks like, you know, you run around some fantasy world hitting things with swords and hammers. Maces. You can unlock godlike armor, so why wouldn't you play it? Well, Gearbox's involvement. I know some people uh, find Gearbox games uncomfortable because the person who runs it, of course, is uh, an unsavory character. But that's that's not for here. Makes me think of Kingdoms of Amala, which is coming out soon. A redo of it. Kingdoms of Amala Re-Reckoning, a name that people hate, but I really like I think it's really good there's a there's a game coming up that I really like the name of that everyone hates it's called Returnal we're not seeing that for a while though because I can look at all the timeline the timelines of the footage I can see how far in I am not very far so this game probably has the most impressive PS5 graphics um, of the lot when I saw this I, I I thought to myself truly we are seeing the power of PlayStation thing you've always meant to do I mean, the frame rate, the fidelity, the textures, the character models in a fully realized 3D world. You can see some ray tracing behind the high school and uh, on the horns of that Triceratops. I thought it was Deltarune at first when they first showed this off. But no, this is, um, oh, what was it? High school dreams and London cream. Goodbye Volcano High, that's what it was. I had to remember it. I don't know what this is. But you can play a guitar in it. Or watch your character play a guitar. I don't know how it works. But it's Goodbye Volcano High. Yeah. I'll probably check this one out. Is it PS5 exclusive or not? I didn't check out, I didn't follow this one up. I just looked at it and thought, oh yeah, looks like something I'd uh, looks like something I'd give a go. Looks like something I'd play more on the Switch than the PS5 though, which is why I asked. But it says there, PlayStation console exclusive. Play. It says, I love that. That trailer said, play has no limits. It said PlayStation exclusive, and then after, play has no limits. Well, clearly, it does. You just bought some limits, Sony. All right, this is Gran Turismo. This is car racing. Boring, isn't it? Boring. Uh, again, sorry for any clunks and clumps. You just gonna look, that's my car. You just gonna have to live with it. I mean, if you're still watching this, like what, almost 15 minutes in, you've already gotten used to shit. So this is Gran Turismo, bores the hell out of me. Cars aren't interesting to me. I mean, I'll turn my head if I see a yellow car drive by. I mean, yellow cars are exciting, but other than that, 
dull as dishwater. I've never had any interest in a car. I don't even have interest in driving them. Thank God I've moved back to a city. I'll never have to. That kind of yellow. I like that kind of yellow. I like to see a red truck because I can pretend it's Optimus Prime driving by. So the thing about racing games, ah, racing games, is that while they, while the realistic ones, I should say, bore the shit out of me, the more simulated ones, they are really good for showing off graphics. Um, you know, the cars are all shiny and reflective, so that's always a good opportunity to show off, um, well, just how shiny and reflective you can make things. Um, you get these detailed racetracks that uh, fly at you really fast. Um, so it's a really good opportunity is a racing game. There's a reason why Sony has Gran Turismo and Microsoft has Forza and they always sort of lift them up quite highly when a, a, a new console needs showing off. Because racing games, these, these uh, realistic ones look real, real good. However, I am bored. This is, this is the, the least interesting part of a racing game as well. They dedicate quite a bit of time to that. That's, where we're, that's what we're reduced to, by the way. Listen up, viewer. We're making car noises. I don't know what that was. That was fucking Boss Ness. That wasn't a car, that was Boss Nass. Boss Nass car. That was good, didn't it? Peel all of the uh, Confederate flags off of the Gungans asses. Every Gungan, every Gungan suit. Actually, that, no. I was about to say every Gungan suit that George Lucas had made had a Confederate sticker on its bum. But then there were no suits in that film. They had the actor who played Jar Jar sat on a table with Jar Jar's, like a sculpt of Jar Jar's head on top of his own head. At least that's on the behind the scenes clips I've looked at. I know, there might have been a full on suit, I don't know. I'm not George Lucas, I don't know what suits were commissioned for Star Wars The Phantom Menace, you know. Maybe there were some physical droidickers or maybe it was all CG. Play has no limits, come on. Let's... Let's, let's kick these barriers down, huh? Open some doors. Play has no limits. PlayStation exclusive. Hitman, Hitman 3. I almost want to say Hitman 3 is an easy win for Square Enix and, and Crystal Dynamics and all that, but I don't want to diminish the work they put in because it takes a lot to make games as varied and, and, and just easy to indulge in as Hitman 3, or, or the Hitman, the recent Hitman games. I know I've not played Hitman 3, but that's the point. All Hitman 3 has to do is be more Hitman that we saw in, in, in the series since the reboot, and they've done it. The formula has ridiculously long legs. Drop us into a fairly, you know, not a massive, but a, a, an explorable map. Fill it with ways to kill someone and then let players have a ton of fun. Obviously that takes work and design and some, you know, inventiveness. Well, a lot of inventiveness, but my God, what a winning formula. So yeah, death awaits and so do I. I'll play Hitman, Hitman 3. All right, what have we got up next? Okay, we got up next the one that, you know, actually did turn heads in terms of visual uh, impressiveness. This is Horizon Forbidden West. And this, you know, it looks really good. Again, biggest generational graphical leap in the history of humankind. No. Absolutely not. But this does look unsurprisingly the best of the lot. I mean, Gorilla make very good looking games. I mean, they make very good games, period. Uh, I'm a big Killzone fan, as I've said many times before. I absolutely love the Killzone series. I'd almost be sad that Horizon was as successful as it was just because the chances of getting more Killzone are slim, at least in the next few years, I would say, for the foreseeable. But 
it's hard to complain about it when Horizon itself was so excellent. And these crabs look amazing. I mean, in terms of crab graphics, the PS5 has got it down. They're shiny. They're covered in sand. They clip on a fish with their little clippers. And then here is Aloy. Aloy on a metal cow. Gorilla rejected that name for the series. I thought it was one of my best best titles. So this is the thing from Detective Pikachu. The big turtle, but this time a robot in it. You see all the water dripping off the robot. These are the things they want you to really pay attention to. Water dripping off the robot, all these little bits of shrubbery flying in the breeze. All of the little bits of grass being kicked up when she rides through it. The seaweed here. That's what they want us to look at. And it's all good stuff. Very savvy move on the part of Gorilla to um, change up the location. One thing that the First Horizon did very well, in my opinion, was the, uh, the variety of biomes within the world. Um, the world of Horizon wasn't just one thing. It's very tempting in open world games to try and make your world feel cohesive by making all of the terrain more or less the same. Uh, whereas in the first one you had deserts, you had mountains, um, grasslands, forests, and you've got a lot of that here from the looks of things, but these beachy areas, more tropical areas. Um, one thing, you know, Gorilla seems good at is a variety of locations. That's somewhat true in Killzone as well. Um, maybe not so much Killzone 2, but Killzone 1, 3, and 4, uh, or Shadowfall as it's called, went to quite a few different um, terrains and places. Gorilla seems to have fun making environments, which is where I've said before is where this current generation of games is um, going to stand out. Because I've, I've said before in several videos that character models don't impress me so much. Um, at least looking at all these next gen games, but the environments are a lot more detailed. Um, and that's that seems to be bearing out. So Gorilla's in a good position. Plus, Killzone Shadowfall st is still one of the best looking PS4 games. And it was a launch title. Um, you know, and you play it today, and I played it earlier this year. It still looks amazing. So I've got no doubt they will uh, they'll pull out all the stops and... and really take advantage at this early stage of the PS5. This is Kino. This one just looks adorable. It's another swarm em up style game from the looks of things, which is what I've taken to calling Yip Pikmin, Overlord, um, all the games like that where you control lots of little things. So these are little black furry things that hang around with this, uh, this person here. And they look really cute. And you make that stick into a bow. You want a bow stick? This game will give it to you. Give you a bow stick and little furry things with eyes and mouths. And Groot. Oh, Groot here. Are we halfway through? Jesus Christ. Actually, that thing looks like Chan from Through the Dragon's Eye, which is a reference. Less than 5% of you will get, but the 5% of you right now who do get it, in no way, shape or form, imagined that when you started this video, someone would make you think of Dragon's Eye again. You remember that? North or south, east or west, the quest to save the land of Elamar goes far. Look through the dragon's eye and fly. That's how the theme tune to Dragon's Eye went. Through the dragon's eye. It was a kid's show where someone in a very bad dragon suit led some kids who hung around with someone in a very bad mouse suit. And they learned to read. It was educational. They learned to read as they saved the world of Palomar and went far. Bridge of Spirits. Kina. Bridge of Spirits. Quinoa. Bridge of Spirits. Looks good. That does look fun. It's a PlayStation 5 console exclusive. Play has no limits. So, 
I'm not bored of doing that, of pointing that out. This is Little Devil. I just got an email about this. Um, apparently it was on Kickstarter, and some of the people involved, or some of the people who backed it weren't too thrilled with, like, delays or, like, mixed news on it. I don't know. I mean, it looks cute. Again, it's not cutting-edge next-gen, but... To Sony's credit, I'm glad they showed off some of these smaller games. It's that weird thing where I really want to have a go and a, a pop at Sony for one thing, deservedly. But it's hard to do that when they, the thing they did instead of that is actually quite good. Because I'm always in favour of... Well, I do it on the Jimquisition, or at least I did until I forgot. I need to start doing it again. Where if I just did a, a Jimpressions on its own of, of some of these indie games, no one would watch them. If I put it in the Jimquisition, that gives it a way bigger platform than it would have if I tried to show it off on its own terms. So I'm glad that Microsoft and Sony now are um, more willing to stuff a whole bunch of indies or mid-tier games into their presentations. And, oh, hit the microphone again. So it looks like you go out hunting things while an old man um, just potters around his house. It looks like there'll be a lot of comedy involved. I mean, look, drop a bomb. And instead of seeing the bomb drop, it was this old man having a shit. It's what we call a visual humour, isn't it? Shooting all these little monsters, big cat thing. That. Studio Ghibli monsters. I've never seen a Studio Ghibli film. Not out of any, you know, refusal to do so. It's just not the way my life shook up. You know, it's just the path that my life's taken me on is one in which I haven't watched a Studio Ghibli film yet. You know, some people, the path they're on means they'll never go to China. They'll never go visit China and the historical landmarks there. They'll spend all their time at, you know, Crayford or something, or Slade Green. Somewhere in that area, that outer London borough area. So this isn't Death Stranding. Or, or a Kojima game. Is it a Kojima game? I can't remember. Me and Justin watched this presentation yesterday and we were just running our mouths. Didn't pay too much attention. I thought it was The Division when this happened. I was like, is this a new Division or an expansion? Because you do this in The Division. You go through an abandoned city and then you look at holograms of people just sort of, you know, standing around. But it's not. Actually, it's not. It's a ghost cat. It's a game about a ghost cat. A little girl, a cat, you can see bits of its bones and its brain. And it flickers in and out because it's a ghost hologram cat. And then, not Death Stranding Man wants to, I don't know, shake a hand or pull her head off with one of his own hands. That, that's the only one of two, and the only two options that you can get from that hand. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's, I'm really hot and sweaty now. And not in a sexy way, in a fat way. You get to a certain threshold where being hot and sweaty is no longer a seductive idea. And I'm past that. The fuck's going on? What's this shit? So, you got a wrangle satellite. Satellite wrangler. Pragmatar. I fucking hit the microphone again. Absolute, absolute mess, mate. Absolute mess. Now you're on the moon. Don't bump into any wizards. While you're up there. It's funny, when Destiny replaced the line that wizard came from the moon... People went up in arms, calling it censorship. But you change one sentence that, you know, could have been offensive or alienating to a marginalised group, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, this is a First Amendment culture war. No one better than I. When we took out the best line in video games, which is what that wizard came from the moon is. That's censorship. Anyway, we're going to test some resolve now, and question a couple of truths. 
I'm not going to doubt much devotion, though. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty devotion confident. PlayStation 5 development footage shown, subject to change. So this is, you know, this is what, what the game might look like. I did a little burpee there. I'm sorry. Project Athia. So this is Square Enix, you can tell, because it's uh, just some made-up bullshit with Project. Um, and, you know, really impressive visuals that they're, they're probably fucking made all on their own. Bloating the budget to ridiculous extremes. We won't see this for another 10 years. Square Enix at this point showing off just some, you know, a couple of visuals and then some bullshit name it pulled out its ass means nothing. I'm sure it'll look really nice, but, you know, what they just showed us there was pointless. It was Square Enix pointlessness. Insomniac. So this is Ratchet and Clank. Oh, yeah, we got some heavy hitters coming still. Even though in terms of game trailers, for some reason I ended on Solar Ash before I do the PS5 reveal, hardware reveal trailer, which will be the thing we close out on. So Ratchet and Clank looks pretty. Now I'm not saying any of these games don't look better than they would on PS4. Like this is really nice, these are really nice visuals, but they are not making me, you know, jettison my knob in delighted amusement. But I, I like the Ratchet and Clank series. It's weird, like, I have a lot of fun playing it. And they're, they're quite humorous and the guns are fun and inventive, but there's something about the shooting to me that is always just on the cusp, just on the cusp of unsatisfying. And it's hard for me to describe it. Because I, I like these games quite a bit, but there's something about the shooting that never quite feels right. I'm not sure if it's just the way the aiming works in the... It's more clear in this game than any other shooter I've played that you're moving the camera and the bullets are following those movements. It might just be the perspective. I don't know. Either way, this trailer... I like the whole, you know, moving through different realities. Justin, when he first saw that, immediately was like, I hope they sort of play with Ratchet going into a dimension with Sly Cooper in it. And I'm like, just go the whole hog and do one with fucking Infamous in it and all. Now, one thing I forgot to include here was the... They showed this trailer and then they showed gameplay as a separate video. But this video is about to end, so they didn't take that on the end. I saw a hologram of the robot, whose name I forgot. The main recurring villain who's been in a couple, but I really like that character. And they showed um, Gleb Gleb, the, uh, the famous uh, new character for the Ratchet and Clank series, Gleb Gleb. Everyone loves Gleb Gleb. But right now, a story's coming to a close. Oh, Jesus Christ. That white text on a black background, my God, you could have thought it was a, a corporate Twitter post. Reveling in thoughts and prayers or showing support. Or Bobby Kotick pledging $1 million of his billions dollar fortune. And the 30 mil he gets every year that you don't need. How generous. So this is Resident Evil, obviously. I say obviously, I mean the, the trailer yesterday kept everyone guessing a bit. There's only a few things it could have been. I mean, you say the story comes to a close, um, which indicates that it's, you know, we're talking about a well-known character. And then you start showing horror things with dubious voice acting, which, by the way, I don't mind in my horror. Um, I'd like more games with dubious voice acting. They kind of... A lot of games that would have had hilariously bad voice acting. These days, you can get competent uh, actors for cheap. Uh, competent isn't as fun as sort of really bad dubbing. So voice acting has just become less funny over the years, but that's neither here nor there. This is Resident Evil 8, The Village. Looks like uh, not really zombie time here. Weird little monsters. Makes me think of Until Dawn a little with the sort of snowy woods and these Wendigo-like creatures running about the place. Right. So it's not showing off like 
mega amounts of gameplay. It's showing off, you know, mostly just the environments and some cutscenes and whatnot, some story hints. This Resident Evil, it don't need to show off much. Capcom's been really, really good with this series. Whether it's the third-person remake uh, games, which are full-fledged games in their own right, or the first-person perspective we saw in Resident Evil 7. I mean, just Capcom's run of games, as I've pointed out in, in, a, in, in a recent position, I pointed it out about uh, Konami and how Capcom should make all Konami's games. Capcom has just been supplying rock-solid game after rock-solid game. Well, more than rock solid, just most of them have been really great. There's old Chris looking a bit old. Why? Why? 2021. Play has no limits. Not an exclusive, so this play doesn't actually have any limits. Right, what have we got next? I mean, I know what I got next because I just saw it on the timeline. Returnal! This is the game that I think has a really good name. I like portmanteaus. I'm a portmanteau king. It's my favorite thing. Over and over. I read your so this is called Returnal. The trailer makes it look all roguelike -y. You die a lot, but not like Deathloop, I guess. Crash. The attack. My death. She had a crash, she died. Crash. Attack. Attack. My death. Died. I knew it. I got a real cough coming on. I knew a cough would happen before this video was over. Hold on. There we go. The old ads my flares up a little bit here and there. It's not been great this morning. But I thought, wow, I'm, uh, I'm making good time here. And I'm feeling all stuffed up. I'm glad this is almost over so I can get out from under this horrid blanket. This one's very grim looking. It looks like there won't be much of a giggle in this one. Very dark, very grim. Lots of death. Shooting looks decent. It looks like it'll be a, it looks like a, it'll at least be a solid shooter game with some other elements. I mean, there's some borderline bullet hell looking stuff going on here. Returnal. Fuck you all. Good game. Good name, I mean. Fuck you. Fuck you. Returnal. Fuck ya. Fuck y'all. Okay. Sackboy. There's not much. This is one of the last three. We got Sackboy, we got Solar Ash, and then we got the PS5 hardware reveal trailer. And then I can stop. Tony Tiger! Oh, shit. This tiger's gonna scare the shit out of me. I just know it. No. Oh, God. Now oh, that's it, Zipper. Famous Tiger Zipper. Ah! Oh, thank fuck, it was only Sackboy. In a big adventure. <laughs> I'm happy to see this, actually. Because Media Molecule, of course, brought out Dreams earlier this year. And then when they first... When I first saw Sackboy, I was like, oh, do we even need Little Big Planet? Like, Dreams has sort of taken all that over. But... This is its own little 3D adventure. It's not a, a game-making product um, like Dreams or the earlier Little Big Planets were, which I'm happy to see because the visual style of, of Little Big Planet was really in, in, endearing. Um, Sackboy is a, a fun little mascot character, so I'm glad to see all of the assets and art style, all the aesthetic from the Little Big Planet series. Uh, make its way into its own game, because it would be a shame to just sort of sit on, on that property and do nothing with it. So if Dreams is uh, going forward, if Dreams is going to be the uh, the software 
the media molecule uh, designs for game production purposes for user generated content then I'm glad we see something like this. I mean, the game looks fine. It doesn't look like it'll, you know, be 10 out of 10 game of the year or anything. It's fairly, fairly old fashioned looking mascot platformer. But it looks like it'll be a giggle. And that's Sackboy. <laughs> a big adventure. He's tired. And he's a little resty. No time for that. Oh, you're being chased by whatever those things are. Oh, sack boy, will you ever learn? PlayStation exclusive. Play has no limits. Right, Solar Ash, last one. Before we look at the PS5, have you seen it? Annapurna? Wait, no! There was another Annapurna game I haven't put on. The one with the cats. Stray. Fuck, hang on. I'm gonna drop this into the timeline. There we go. So it, it's Solar Ash and then Stray. I forgot to add Stray to the list. And that's out of the two Annapurna uh, looking games. Looking? Out of the two games that Annapurna uh, have uh, added to the showcase. Uh, Stray is the one that has my attention most. Although it's not a, a brand new announcement. They have shown little bits of Stray before. But this is Solar Ash, not Stray. The Void's calling, for God's sake. Pick up the phone. I didn't include absolutely every single trailer, I don't think. I mean, as evidenced by what I've just had to do, clearly I've forgotten some. Having a run around. So hot in the blanket. There's been some comparison to Breath of the Wild on this. Uh, yeah. Solar Ash, everyone. Now, Stray is all about being a cat in a robot town. You can't really do much better than that. Look, there's the town. There's a robot. You'll see a cat in a minute. Not even a minute. This trailer isn't even a minute long, is it? It might be. I don't know. My mouth's getting dry now, though. And I'm almost out of coffee drink. Oh, it's lukewarm. Oh, the worst kind of warm. RIP humans at the top of the stairs. All the humans are probably dead, but the robots have computer screens for faces. So it's a trade-off. So, if I recall correctly, you play as a cat, you run around on a windowsill, run around on pipes and shelves, ledges and the kind. Visually, it's, it's, it's got a real, a style that really appeals to me. So I am, I've been looking forward to this one for a while. I like, uh, you know, I like this, these images of city streets with all the big bright neon lights, the garishness of it set against the night. So yeah, Stray has had my attention for a while. It continues to do so. Um, I'm all on board for that. But that's neither here nor there. Because now it's time for the grand finale, the main event. Now more than 45 minutes freeform because I had to add that trailer in. PlayStation console exclusive. Play has no limits. PlayStation. All right, here we go. Serious time now. Balls. Jostling balls. Pile of blue balls. Big blue balls. A sea of balls. That's what the PS5 should look like. Just this endless cascading pile of bowls. Shit. They're gonna reveal it in a second. I mean, you all already know what it looks like. 
it looks like a building a tech CEO would live in. It looks like a, a Wi-Fi router I've seen, I've seen it compared to. It looks like a, a, a luxury boat from the future. Bloody hell. They really milk it, don't they? I'm sure yesterday when I didn't know what the PS5 looked like, this was building up a lot of anticipation. Actually, no, I remember, no, no, because this bit happened and then I got really bored and stroppy. And then this happened and I was like, oh, there we are. It is a console. There it is. That's your PS5 right there. It is some plastic with a light on it. Oh, Oh, look at that! Some slits and holes. Fuck me, running for a box of matches. Vents. Design. Curvature. Textures. It's the PS5. A bit of a blue light. Have they hidden the on switch again? Show us that. PS5. It'll be $7,000. Did they give a price yesterday? Can't remember now. I don't think they did. Oh, look. I've never seen so much plastic. Down, all the way down. Yeah, you show me. Oh. Ah. Oh, is digital one as well. Which at this point you might as well just get, right? I don't think I remember the last time I bought a physical game for a console. HD camera. They got all of the accessories, don't you fucking worry. Remote, you want a remote? Right there, you bastard. That's it. It's some white and black plastic. It's a console. Why are we that excited? Oh, well, that was the reveal anyway. Bye.